about 10 minutes and I try to make full use of it. Um, so uh, I'm the Digital Minister of Taiwan and I'm very happy to share with you the stories that we've had in the past few years in Taiwan practicing open government as now the fundamental value of Taiwan government okay. next. Um, so just this January we elected uh, our new president, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen. I voted for her, not knowing that I'll join her cabinet uh, about two months ago. Next. Uh, I voted for her because I live with seven cats and two dogs, and she lived as a fellow animal lover with very similar values like animal welfare, uh, carbon reduction, marriage equality. is considered radically progressive by Asian standards and somewhat progressive by European standards. Next. Um, so one of those values is really the idea of trusting the people enough so that people can trust you back. It's the open government spirit. Next. Um, so this is literally our first family. Next. Um, so during the election, which was January, and the actual transformation of power, it took four months. It was during January to May, and it was completely peaceful. Uh, it was um, orchestrated by our previous prime minister, who is an independent Google supercomputing engineer. And it was completely peaceful because he belongs to no parties. Next. Um, so Simon, Simon John's main contribution was placing Taiwan on the second place of the Network Readiness Index and the first place on the Global Open Data Index by mandating all the SAP systems should be over next. Um, and uh, our new cabinet is made of more independent people than people of any party, so including the new prime minister and me. And the two independent prime ministers arranged a transfer of power by uploading everything, a checkpoint document to the internet and asking the next cabinet to download it. So it's a putting complete trust to the people. Next. Uh, and it is the new norm. Our uh, Taipei city mayor, our vice president are all pro-transparency independent politicians. Next. And this happened after three decades of bitter partisan politics in Taiwan until the Occupy happens where we occupy parliament for 22 days. Next. The MPs was on strike, not refusing to deliberate a trade service agreement, and the students at Occupy just deliberated ourselves using ICT technologies as a demo of how to scale deliberate listening with half a million people. Next. So um, most of the ICT was done by this movement of Gov0. Basically, we register a domain g0v.tw that says for every government website, env, gov, tw for the environment, if you change the O to a zero, you get into a shadow uh, government that is built by open source enthusiasts and solves the discoverability problem and we have thousands of hackers who, who hack this new kind of ICT shadow government, which then gets adopted by the real government in the next procurement cycle. Next. And so we have a lot of civil hackers, thousands of them. Why is that next? It's because uh, when I learned personal computer, it was in 1989. It was also the year where Taiwan got the freedom of the press out of martial law next. And then our first presidential election, which was in 1996, was also the year where I used the Wild Web, and everybody in the world used the Wild Web for campaigning next. So for us, free software means freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and that is, so far, has been the primary value of the Taiwan Civil Society next. And so uh, by the end of 2014, all the occupiers, all occupy supporters, become new mayors. We have a issue, just like in um, Madrid and other places in Spain, we now have to take the street technologies to put into use in the government next. And our first uh, issue to tackle is a uh, virus of the mind that has been sweeping the world. It's the meme of the sharing economy, in particular Uber. Next. Uh, what, what, next, please. Um, what, what it does is, is this something that spread between phones and drivers and passengers that says, OK, algorithms now rules the dispatch system better than regulations. Next. And so if people using this kind of meme spread, uh, there will be a lot of um, protests and contests next in the society. So we try to fix this through deliberation because by listening to all the stakeholders very deeply, we can get people inoculated against future propaganda next. And so uh, deliberation to us is like a vaccine of the mind next. So to scale deliberation, uh, we use the focus conversation method that asks everybody the facts next. And then the feelings of those facts, there's no right or wrong, and next. And then we curate our ideas. The best ideas are the ones that address the most people's feelings, next. And then we ratify it into regulation, next. So, um, and it wasn't always the case. Usually the government speaks an expert language with private sector lobbyists and the civil society and the independent scholars, but with a radically different set of facts and feelings with people on the street, next. And so ideas in this environment for self facts and carrying other people's feelings become ideologies that blinds us to other people's feelings and new facts. Next. 
And so the first thing that we did is crowdsource all the scientific observable data about Uber, also from the private sector and civil society next. And then we use a, uh, a artificial intelligence system called Polis, it's open source, that reflects everybody's feelings on this two-dimensional map for three weeks next. And then for each yes or no, you get clustered with people that uh, share the same sentiments, and we give binding power, agenda-setting power, to anyone's feeling who can convince a supermajority of people's feelings next. And so this is how we end up with a set of recommendations that people are comfortable and can live with next. And then we'll hold a live consultation with all the stakeholders and try to ratify them into law next. And we succeeded. Uh, the deliberation was completely peaceful because it was live streamed and was watched by thousands of people next. And so it was ratified, everybody was happy with that next. And so uh, the thing is that it works very well on the controversial topics where the press loves it. But now we're scaling it to other ordinary day-to-day -day issues next. So this is uh, my FAQ page, my, uh, everybody can ask me any question, and I, it only appears when I answer it, and it's sent to thousands of subscribers. I shortcut the traditional media so that I have a direct contact with other people. Next. And then, for all the meetings, I accept all the meetings, this is Uber's David Kluf, but it was always uh, recorded in 360, uh, like by the time he enters my room until he leaves my room, and everything has got machine transcribed immediately after the meeting, and published at most 10 days after every each meeting that I take. It's a radical transparency gesture that also empowers investigative journalists. Next. So what we're doing now is we're changing the procurement laws so that the investigative journalists and researchers don't have to go to 15 different data portals. Next, we're building open API standard into all our new procure procurement uh, contracts so that everything can be machine generated and integrated in place. Next. So this is how we work internally. We have a PDIS uh, team that is much like LLF here or GDS or anywhere else. Next. And so this is how we draw our roadmap, our weekly roadmap. Next. And because we we're now 15 people in two offices, while we used to work like this, next, we now use uh, work like this. It's an open source clone of Trello that we use day to day, next. But it's not alone. We deploy free and soft, uh, open software technology on this one-click install, like an app platform called Sandstorm IO, that we can share with anybody in other ministry and local governments. It, it, the deployment cost is zero, next. So this is how we're infecting uh, the local government and the national government with the public uh, digital innovations in the PDIS space. Next. So uh, to conclude, um, would you please next uh, all the way like five steps? Thank you. Uh, voting is something everybody can do. Open data is something that people use to vote. Next. And then we set up this kind of binding uh, questionnaire answers and everything so that people can all the way go up to the agenda setting power. We understand that not everybody can get to the higher levels, but on every level there is a connection to people up on the ladder and down on the ladder, so it's a ladder of knowledge acquisition so that people see exactly how much government trusts them and we expect civil society to trust exactly the same amount back. Next. So this is how we break out of the filter bubbles. Next by setting up at least 60 days prior to every regulation change to have all the stakeholders' data cases in public and using this kind of technology to translate people who are not so good at writing and reading into uh, automatically transcribed uh, transcript formats and facilitation formats, we try to get all the regulations into the day-to-day -day cycle on the open government status next. So uh, to conclude, uh, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen during her inauguration speech said, a democracy used to be a showdown between two opposing values next. But now it has to be a conversation between many diverse values. Next. Um, we need to build a unified democracy that is not hijacked by ideology. Next. A efficient democracy that responds to the society's needs. And next. And foremost, a pragmatic democracy that lets people take care of each other's feelings. Next. And we do this just by listening. Next. And as a hacker and an anarchist hacker, I, what I do is to share all those tools that we built for ICT-enabled scalable listening and share it with the world. Next. And thank you very much. community, some view Taiwan as a province or as a region or as a country, it's all okay and we, we, we are uh, very much willing to participate in whatever way we can. Thank you so much. Thank you.